morning. In today's class, we will look at explosions in confined and unconfined geometries. When we say confined, what is it we mean confined or we say unconfined? That means when the boundary of the explosive gas mixture what we have is sort of confined, we mean it is it does not allow the gas to go and mix with the surrounding that means the boundary is impervious that means the, the boundary is could be fixed the boundary could move, but as such the, the boundary isolates the gas mixture and the explosion what happens in it from the surroundings. And it is quite possible that the boundary will give way it may it may give way and the products of combustion will thereafter mix with the surroundings. When we say confined, what we mean is the, the, the boundary of boundary containing the gas mixture is such that it is something like a tank, like let us say we had the uh, fuel tank in the TWA 800 flight, which we said is exploded. And you know this particular fuel tank, we presume that the vent is so small that it is as good as a solid boundary or a storage vessel which keeps the gas within it and the gas builds up the high pressure and then it blows off. Similarly, when we talk in terms of let us say the pressure cooker in the Boston Marathon which, which happened let us say last year, you know the, the, the pressure cooker contains the high pressure gases you put a combustible it has and till it starts leaking it starts uh, venting out the gas as well. It is something like a, a vessel with a fixed storage volume and therefore and under these conditions when the boundary contains the gases we say it is confined. We could have unconfined like for instance in the open medium I have an explosion taking place in an open medium without any constraints at all then we say it is unconfined. You know in between confined and unconfined I could also have partial confinement in which case let us say I have the ground as it were and an explosion, explosion occurs just at the ground or above the ground. The gas could interact with the ground maybe with the blockages on the ground and therefore it becomes something like a partial confinement. Maybe even if I talk in terms of a tunnel which is uh, bored through a hill and there is a road which goes through. You know it, it is a case which is open at the ends of the two tunnel and I have maybe the road going through the tunnel. Well, it is a case of partial confinement because it is open to the atmosphere at the same time I have boundaries partial boundaries and not fully enclosed boundaries. When the boundary is fully enclosed we say well it is confined. Let us get started with a confined medium and let us say we look at explosions in a closed boundary explosions in let us say a closed boundary. To begin with let us say I have a volume let, let me presume that the boundary does not move this is the boundary I have a volume of let us say some particular flammable mixture of gases volume V. Let it be at the same ambient temperature as the surroundings let us say T initial let us call it of the gas which is same as that temperature of the surroundings we call it as T i. And now I, I presume what I do is because of the chemical reactions which takes place within this flammable mixture let us say some heat gets generated at the rate Q let us say Q joules of heat gets generated. Now, I want to find out what is the maximum pressure which can be reached within this storage volume that is this fixed volume what is available. Therefore, what we say is well you, you do an energy balance you say well the heat given is Q the work done by the boundary is W and Q minus W is equal to the change in internal energy of this particular medium. 
Well, we say that the boundary is fixed, the boundary does not move, therefore Q becomes 0. I am sorry, W, the work done by the boundary, since the boundary does not move, it is 0. Therefore, I have Q is equal to change in the internal energy of this medium. That means finally, when the maximum temperature is reached, when the maximum pressure is reached, I have something like the final pressure minus the initial value of the, I am sorry, final internal energy minus the initial value of internal energy. And what is internal energy equal to? Internal energy is equal to the mass into specific heat at constant volume into temperature. And therefore, I can write that the heat which is liberated by the combustion or by the chemical reactions of the gases, I can write as equal to m into Cv into the maximum temperature what it reaches minus the initial value of temperature. Therefore, I am able to relate the energy which is deposited or which is released by this particular medium to the change in internal energy. And now, I look at this expression Cv, can I, can I solve this to give me the maximum value of pressure because I would like the pressure to be such that the boundary or the, uh, uh, or, the, or, or the particular case which holds this particular material or the storage vessel which holds this does not yield, does not burst under pressure. I am interested in such a pressure such that the boundary can hold this pressure. Therefore, I say well Cp minus Cv, we have been doing this earlier or rather Cv is equal to Cp by Cv is the specific heat ratio minus 1 into the specific gas constant or rather C V is equal to R over gamma minus 1 and therefore, the expression Q becomes equal to M into R divided by gamma minus 1 into T M minus the initial value of the temperature. Now, you know when I, when I look at this particular one, let us assume that the gases are perfect in the sense that Cp, Cv are constant and the gas obeys the law Pv is equal to MRT. That means, you internal energy is only a function of temperature, enthalpy is only a function of temperature, H minus U is equal to Pv. Therefore, Pv is equal to MRT, this is the ideal gas equation. And since we are considering perfect gases, we also presume Cp and Cv are constants. Therefore, we have Pv is equal to MRT. And therefore, I have MR into the maximum temperature is going to be equal to P maximum into V, MR Ti is equal to P initial into the volume because the volume is fixed and therefore, I can write Q as equal to P, I take volume outside, volume does not change into Pm that is the maximum corresponding to this Pi and this is divided by gamma minus 1. Or rather, I get the value of the maximum pressure Pm minus the initial value of pressure of the gases which are contained here before combustion takes place as equal to Q over gamma minus 1 into the volume. And let us say if the units are right, Q is in joules. If it is in joules, we can also say joules divided by meter cube or rather joules is equal to Newton meter by meter cube and therefore, the pressure has units of Newton per meter square and therefore, if you express Q in joules and volume in meter cube, I get that the change in pressure in Pascal namely Newton per meter square and this gives me the maximum pressure which can be obtained in a particular vessel of volume V in which chemical reactions are occurring. Well, I get the maximum value of pressure and in case the, the, the pressure of gases exceeds the value which the boundary can hold, well, the boundary breaks and you have a wave which starts off. Well, this is how you estimate the maximum value of pressure and what is it we find? It is a strong function of gamma. You know, normally for gases, you know, gamma is for air it is 1.4, for combustion gases it is around 1.3, 1.22 of this order and therefore, the gamma must be accurate to be able to get the maximum value. And in this case, since we presume that the gas is perfect, we also said gamma in the unreacted gases, gamma in the reacted gases is about the same and therefore, this method of estimating the maximum pressure is subject to some errors. But let us let us put things together. 
if you were to do an experiment and calculate what is the value of the maximum pressure when the initial pressure is let us say 1 atmosphere that is equal to 100 kilo Pascal, we find that for hydrocarbon gases like let us say methane CH4 gas, methane the maximum value of pressure is of the order of something, something like 5.5 to 6, 6 atmospheres. Whereas, if I consider propane C3H8 which is little stronger, well it is of the order of 7. Normally, it is between 5.5 to around 7 for most of the hydrocarbon gases except when we talk of acetylene, no mind you we have been always telling that the triple bond in acetylene that is acetylene C2 H2 is a strong gas. In this case, the maximum value of PM is of the order of 10 atmospheres when the initial pressure is 1 atmospheres and for all other hydrocarbon gases it is between let us say 6 to 7 or 5.5 to 7.5 of this order. Therefore, we tell also, but for hydrogen oxygen again it is higher of the order of 11 to 12. Therefore, this PM which we say is the maximum value of, of pressure under constant volume conditions that means, if I have a gas which is burning in at constant volume the boundary does not move the maximum pressure I get is around let us say 6 to 10 times the initial pressure is what we get. Well, let us let, try to estimate this it is of interest you know we have been seeing such incidents ha happening we talked of the pressure cooker bomb we talked of the fuel tank and some aircraft exploding and therefore, let us try to estimate this PM for one particular case. Let me take you through a particular case study because in this case we will also learn to do uh, learn to apply the internal energy of formation. Let us do it for the particular case wherein I consider let us say a closed volume. I do not need to specify what is this volume because I find I want to estimate the maximum pressure. I find maximum pressure is depends on the energy density and therefore, we will not come directly into the picture. Therefore, we also find the function of gamma let us see what is the role played by gamma also. You know well I have a closed volume let us say V meter cube and it contains let us say kerosene vapor. air mixture just like what the central wing fuel tank in the Boeing 747 TWA 800 flight which uh, met with an accident what 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 that is the kerosene vapor air uh, mixture and let us assume for the present that it is also stoichiometric. We take stoichiometric because it is little easier to do, but we know how to estimate the heat release and uh, that is the value of Q there for different conditions fuel lean fuel rich and all that. Therefore, we say well kerosene vapor kerosene can be represented as dou decane dou decane is C 16 H 34 plus air what does air contain it contains oxygen each mole of oxygen is associated with 3.76 moles of N 2 and since we are considering dou decane C 16 I am sorry dou decane uh, that means C 16. C n H 2 n plus 2 C 16 H 34 this gives me 16 C O 2 because it is being stoichiometric I fall I, I form completely oxidized products of combustion plus I have 17 H 2 O I have 34 17 H 2 O plus I have nitrogen to be able to find how much nitrogen I have to get the balance I have uh, O over here this takes 16 uh, O 2. Uh, 34 that is 17 by 2 O 2 therefore, this is 8.5 8.5 plus 16 is 24.5 plus 24.5 times O 2 is equal to I will get here 24.5 into 3.76 nitrogen the nitrogen in the products comes out here. This is a stoichiometric assumption, but in general if the temperatures of the products are higher what happens is some of these gases like water will dissociate into let us say HOH maybe CO2 could dissociate and therefore, this gives us an order of magnitude which is quite reasonable let us say. Therefore, 
how do I get the heat which is released in the reaction? We have been saying well the heat of the reaction is equal to minus of the heat of formation of the products at standard conditions 16 into heat of formation of CO2 under standard conditions plus I have 17 of heat of formation of H2O under standard conditions the liquid minus I have heat of formation of kerosene which is equal to 1 into heat of formation of kerosene let us say KER this is the net heat release. But immediately we will jump up and tell well heat of formation corresponds to constant pressure it is the enthalpy of formation. Now we are talking of a constant volume that means a combustion is happening at constant volume. If it is happening at constant volume well no work is done I cannot consider enthalpy but I must consider internal energy and therefore instead of using enthalpy of formation I should be using something like internal energy of formation of let us say CO2 I have to use internal energy of formation of H2O and mind you I am not going to form water here I am going to form vapor I must use the uh, uh, enthalpy of uh, internal energy of uh, steam and not, uh, not water over here and similarly for kerosene it is going to be <coughs> I am sorry internal energy of formation of uh, kerosene vapor uh, at the standard conditions and this is what I must be using therefore I may not be justified in using heat of formation when I am looking at constant volume combustion. We made a note of it I told in passing that yes when we talk of constant volume combustion it is necessary to use the internal energy of formation therefore but what is readily available in the literature is the heat of formation of substances that is the enthalpy of formation and tables on the internal energy of formations are rather rare it is not readily available but it is easy to estimate and that is the reason why we are doing this problem. Let us find out the internal energy of formation of CO2, H2O and kerosene such that we can find out the heat of reaction under constant volume conditions. Let, let us do that we take the case of let us say we start with uh, kerosene we start over here well you know the heat of formation if I go and look at the table for kerosene under standard condition the the value is given as minus 293 kilojoule per mole if I were to look at heat of formation of CO2 standard standard conditions the the value is equal to minus 394 and if I were to look at the heat of formation of H2O water enthalpy of formation at standard condition for water as a liquid this is equal to minus 286 this is readily available. I want to be able to find out what is the internal energy of formation of kerosene and how does how is kerosene formed let us go back to the definition when I form kerosene and we said that the equation for or the molecular formula of kerosene is C16 H34 and how do you form kerosene I take element at the standard state maybe carbon at the standard state plus I have 17 of hydrogen at the standard state I have 16 moles of carbon solid at the because carbon is a solid under ambient conditions 17 of this and well I am able to form this therefore what is happening well carbon as a solid has negligible volume here I have 17 moles and I form well I form kerosene which is again let us say a liquid but you know if I were to form let us say kerosene vapor it is going to be different let us let us do the problem for kerosene liquid and then put vapor over here if I am where to form kerosene vapor then I have a problem in that you know this is the heat of formation I have for ke kerosene which is a which is a liquid over here therefore 
I must say if I were to take the value of kerosene as a vapor, then in that case it should be equal to heat of formation of kerosene which is a liquid and now you know I have to supply heat to be able to make it into a vapor that means I have to add the value of the heat of the vaporization that is latent heat of vaporization in kilojoules per mole. Let us first determine what is the internal energy of formation of kerosene liquid. When I look at this I find well I have 17 moles here and I have 16 moles here. The volume of the, the solid is negligible. The volume of the gas here that is it is under standard conditions I am forming. Therefore, under standard conditions under standard temperature and pressure one mole of any gas contains a volume of 22.4 liters. Therefore, 17 moles will contain a volume of 0 0.0. 0.224 that is 22.4 liters this is 0 0.224 meter cubed this is the volume of the gas here it is liquid it is negligible volume and therefore when I form this particular substance the volume reduces by 17 into 0 0.224 and what is the pressure it is at standard conditions that is one atmosphere pressure and therefore the work which is done uh, by the by these by these two substances since the volume is reducing work is done on the system and this work is equal to P into V constant pressure into the change in volume which is equal to 10 to the power 5 into 17 into 0 0.0224 meter cubed that is we are talking of Pascal that is Newton uh, per meter square into meter cube that is so much joules Newton meter so much joules over here. And this works out to be the work done by the gas comes out as 38 kilojoules, see 38,000 or uh, joules or 38 kilojoules. Therefore, we find that the heat of formation, that is the heat of, uh, I am sorry, the internal energy of formation of kerosene as a liquid is going to be uh, the value of heat of formation was minus 293 plus 38 this is the enthalpy of formation so much uh, 38 kilojoules per particular mole over here because we formed one mole therefore this corresponds to kg per mole that means I have to add 38 because work is done on the system that means uh, that that is the available work and therefore the internal energy decreases from minus 293 to something like minus 255 or so. Now, if in addition you know in the particular example when we took we found that the kerosene liquid had vaporized forms a mixture of kerosene vapor and therefore this is for kerosene as a liquid and if I have to take heat of formation of the kerosene vapor that is delta uf for kerosene vapor is equal to for the liquid it is minus 293 plus 38. And now I have to supply more heat to make to I have to supply the heat of formation to make it into a vapor and that heat of formation of kerosene that is HV for kerosene is equal to 56.8 kilojoules per mole it is readily available in the literature and therefore I have 56.8 and therefore the heat of formation of kerosene vapor I can write it as equal to minus. 198.2. Therefore, compared to the heat of formation of kerosene being minus 293, I have the internal energy of formation of kerosene as equal to minus 198.2. So, also I can estimate the internal energy of formation of CO2 and H2O. Let us determine this because it is quite illustrative of the method what we must be using let me do it over here. If I write the equation for carbon reacting with oxygen to form CO2 what is it I get C yes plus O2 gives me CO2 gas well carbon is a solid one mole there is no change in volume and therefore according to this equation well I have the heat of formation of CO2 under standard condition must be equal to the internal energy of formation of CO2 
and therefore I presume that the internal energy of formation of CO2 remains the same as the enthalpy of formation of CO2 394 kilojoule per mole. Let us estimate it for water and since we said it is not the water which is available but water vapor which is available in the products of combustion therefore let us find out the internal energy of formation of water vapor at the standard conditions. Now you know let us write the equation again H2 element half element gives me H2O. Well what happens there is a decrease hydrogen gas at standard condition oxygen gas at standard condition water being formed at standard condition well the the volume now reduces by one and half but if I were to have H2O as a gas or vapor then the volume reduces only by half therefore if I were to write the value of let us say the heat of formation of water we, we said it is equal to minus 286. If I have to find out this is as a liquid if I have to get heat of formation mind you it is a standard condition of H2O as a vapor well it is going to be minus 286 the heat of form the latent heat of formation of water HV is equal to 40 kilojoules per mole and therefore it is equal to plus 40 which is equal to minus 246 kilojoules per mole and now I find well if I if I look at water well I have 3 by 2 moles over here giving 1 mole of vapor there is a decrease by half a mole of vapor and therefore the work done in, in decreasing the mole by half corresponds to half the into the change in volume 1 mole is associated with 22.4 liters or rather 0 0.0224 meter cube and at the standard pressure conditions is 10 to the power 5 and this is equal to 112 that is equal to uh, 0 0.0112 into 10 to the power 5 joules or rather this is equal to 1.12 kilojoules. You know the, the changes are quite small in a large number and therefore I tell myself well the internal energy of formation of water vapor is equal to minus 246 plus 1.12 maybe because work is done on the system and therefore it comes out to be equal to minus 244.8. kilojoules per mole. Therefore the internal energy of formation of water I write it over here water vapor using this internal energy of formation I find out what is the energy released in the reaction similar to what the way we use the enthalpy of formation or the heat of formation. And therefore, what is the energy which is liberated in the reaction? Let us call it as energy which is liberated in the reaction at constant volume, which is our Q over there for the particular reaction. And that comes out, the, the reaction is, we, we, we had the reaction here, we, we let us rewrite the reaction, I think I have rubbed it off. We have C16, H34, plus we had something like 24.5, this is uh, 16 plus 8 years 24.5 into O2 plus 3.76 of nitrogen which gave us 16 CO2 plus 8.5 no I am sorry 17 H2O plus I have the same thing 24.5 into 3.76 of nitrogen and therefore if I were to write the expression for the energy release in this reaction it is equal to 16 into the minus uh, internal energy of formation of CO2 minus 394 minus of this first term plus I get 17 into for water it is equal to minus 244.8 minus for the reactants it is only one mole over here these are standard elements this is also a standard element no change over here and therefore I get the value as 1 into 
the, the, the value for kerosene is equal to minus 198.2. And you know if I simplify it the value of energy release comes out to be equal to uh, the, the value comes out to be 10 271 kilojoules. You know this is the value of the energy release in a constant volume so much kilojoules. But you know if I look at the expression I am interested in the maximum value Pm minus Pi is equal to we found out that is equal to gamma minus 1 into the energy release divided by volume I am interested per unit volume and the volume corresponds you know the volume does not change I had 1 mole of the vapor and I have 24.5 moles of oxygen I have 24.4 into 3.76 moles of hydrogen therefore the volume which remains constant is equal to 1 corresponds to moles how many moles does the volume correspond let us say the number of moles are 1 plus 24.5 plus 24.5 into 3.76 which is equal to the, the number of moles is equal to 117.6 and therefore the volume associated with this is equal to 117.6 into 22.4 liters or 0 0.224 meter cube this is the volume and therefore if I were to substitute the, the, to, the value of Q by V that is the heat release per unit volume is equal to the value of 10 271 divided by 117.6 which is moles into 0 0.0224 so much joules per meter cube. You know we had written the internal energy of formation as kilojoules therefore it is equal to kilojoules per meter cube. Therefore I get the value of Q by V and this Q by V comes out to be equal to something like 3899 kilojoules per meter cube. Well I have got the value of Q by V and now if I, if I were to estimate the value of the maximum pressure I get Pm minus Pi is equal to gamma minus 1 into the value of Q by V and therefore I get Pm minus Pi is equal to 3899 this is in kilojoules that is 1000 so much joules in this is Q by V into gamma minus 1 taking gamma as 1.2 for the mixture since vapors have a lower value of gamma it is equal to 1.2 minus 1 that is equal to 0 0.2 this gives us something like 3.9 something like 7.8 7 7.8 you know it is becomes 0 0.2 7.8 uh, 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 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal or rather taking the ambient pressure as 10 to the power 5 we get the maximum pressure as approximately equal to something like 8.8 .8. Uh, 8.8 8, 8 atmospheres or something like 8.8 .8 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. Therefore, we find that the maximum pressure what we are estimating comes out to be this it is a somewhat larger than the value which we thought we should get normally for hydrocarbon fuels like kerosene we should get a value around 6.5 to 7 atmospheres. But anyway this is larger the reason being as I said we have made an assumption that gamma does not change during the reaction we are also we did not account for dissociation at high temperatures but it gives an order of magnitude with which we are concerned about. Now this value of Pm therefore let us let us spend a couple of minutes on the type of results what we have we find that the maximum pressure in a constant volume explosion is that that means the, the value of Pm is normally around let us say 5.5 to 7.5 for most hydrocarbon mixtures it is around 10 atmospheres when the initial pressure is 1 atmosphere for the acetylene oxygen and around, around 11 to 12 for hydrogen air stoichiometric mixtures. It depends on the stoichiometric it depends on the equivalence ratio of the mixture 0.1 because that is what determines the energetics you know to some extent 
we must also tell ourselves, you know, if I look at a particular volume, and let's say I, I, I initiate a spark over here, and then I'm calculating the maximum value. The maximum value of pressure corresponds when the entire gas is burnt. But if I initiate an explosion at one end, and it goes to the other end, by the time the entire gas has, has consumed, you know, the walls of the vessel will cool the final mixture. And therefore, if I were to plot, let's say, pressure versus time in an adiabatic enclosure, maybe I'll get the maximum value of pressure, which, which is reached after some time as PM. But if the container, you know, any container is not adiabatic, what is going to happen? Well, initially, it will follow this condition. And maybe it will, because of the cooling effect, the value of the PM will be lower than the actual value of PM when the container is adiabatic. Well, this is how you estimate the maximum value of pressure. But when I look at this pressure, this is how it evolves from the initial pressure to the maximum value of pressure. And maximum value of pressure corresponds when the entire gas gets burnt. You know, when we did the lump mass system, we assumed that the entire mass of gas burns. But in practice, it is not possible because a flame propagates and continues to burn the gas. Now, this brings us to the next part. You know, supposing instead of the flame propagating, supposing I have the same volume, the same gas, but let us say a detonation propagates. If a detonation propagates, the maximum value of PM, which we saw, which we did earlier, we found it is of the order of 14 to 18 atmospheres compared to 5 to uh, 8 atmospheres what we get. Therefore, because Detonation is a compression solution. We found out that the pressure of gases is quite high. For hydrocarbon mixtures, it was of the order of 14 to 18. Therefore, when we talk in terms of detonation, we are talking of a rapid increase in pressure of the order of maybe 14 to 18, corresponding to something like 5.5 to 7.5 for hydrocarbon mixtures when, when we are having a flame. And if by chance, let us say that the flame uh, initially, I start with the mixture which is initially, let us say I have a laminar flame, it becomes turbulent and in the process it converts to a detonation, well, I can have quite high values of pressure here. There is one more reason which we have to, which we have to, one, one particular phenomenon which we have to keep in mind. Supposing I have an enclosure and I have a shock wave that is preceding the chemical reaction, that is a detonation striking the surface and if the impedance, mechanical impedance of this surrounding is higher than this. We have a reflected wave which comes out and we saw that the pressure behind a reflected wave could be anything between 2 to 8 times the initial value and therefore, you know, when we have a detonation, well, I could get extremely high pressures at the walls corresponding to the maximum value. Therefore, we summarize this by telling, if I were to form a flame, I know how to calculate the maximum value of pressure. If I form something like a detonation, well, I get the detonation pressure, in which case PM is very much greater than what we were talking of the order of between 5 to 8 for most hydrocarbon mixtures. Having said this, see, we also, yeah, we, we found out the maximum value of pressure. But what is the rate at which the pressure increases? The rate at which a pressure increases decides the violence of a reaction, how violent it is. Does it just rapidly push it up? Does it go gradually? And therefore, I think we should have some handle on how the dp by dt of the, the pressure time trace changes in a constant volume explosion. Like for instance, I have a given volume, this volume explodes. I am interested in finding out what is the maximum rate, that means dp by dt what is the maximum value which is obtained in this? Because this is what is going to tell me what is the type of pressure wave which I can get in case the vessel bursts. What is this maximum value is something which is of interest to me. Therefore, let us try to find out what is this value. Let us take a look at this. Let us take a look at the pressure time trace and the and try to conjecture something on this over here. Well, what, what happens? Let us say mass of gas which is getting burnt as a function of time. You know, if I say mass of get, 
gas is getting burnt. Initially, I have total unburnt gases. I form a flame and this flame keeps propagating out. This flame propagates over here, propagates over here, propagates after some time over here and these are the different instances of time. Therefore, now if I were to tell, I am interested in the rate at which the mass of gases are getting burnt. The rate at which masses of, are getting burnt corresponds to the speed at which the flame is propagating. Let us say it is a laminar flame, I know how to estimate Su, we have already studied. If the surface area at this particular location of the flame is let us say Af and the, what is the rate at which it is burning into rho u? That means we are talking this is the speed at which mass is getting consumed and the rate at which mass is burning is equal to Su Af into rho u. And therefore, if I were to plot this, I find well I strike a spark over here and what is going to happen? Well, the area keeps on increasing, but after some time if for this particular geometry what I have, that means the area decreases. Therefore, the mass which burns should be something like this. Initially, it starts off with a small area because I presume that the flame velocity is a constant, the initial density is a constant and this is the way it should burn. But as the gas burns, it is pushing the unburned gases ahead of it. That means, well, I have the mixture which is burning here. The flame pushes the gas ahead of it. Therefore, to an observer who is standing outside and watching this flame, he will find that the flame is moving faster because it is moving along with the moving gas and therefore it moves faster and therefore the SU increases. If by chance this flame becomes turbulent, you have high intensity turbulence, it forms wrinkles on it, the, the mass burning rate increases and therefore as the flame propagates, you know what happens is the velocity of the flame also increases. In addition to this, this is only with area increase and therefore in general maybe it will increase like this and it will come down like this. This is the rate at which the mass burning rate changes. And you know if I look at the gases, what gives me the final temperature? The final temperature is the unburned gas into Cv into T plus I have burned gases which is Cv into the burned gas temperature. This is what gives me the value of Mu plus Mb into Cv into the temperature over here. I presume the specific heat does not change and uh, the, this is the mean temperature of the uh, gases which are mixed together. I presume they are thoroughly mixed, I get a mean value of temperature. And therefore, what is it I get? This is the initial value that is the unburned gas temperature, this is the burned gas temperature, this is the mixing cup temperature or the mixing temperature over here. And therefore, when I do this, since it is proportional to the mass of gas getting burnt and the rate at which mass getting get, gets burnt keeps increasing, I get the value of temperature as a function of time. Initially, it starts with this and then it reaches a peak value, it increases and thereafter it stabilizes and reaches a maximum value over here which corresponds to the burnt gas temperature when the entire mass of gas is burnt. Using this, I can now find out well the pressure of gases. Again, I am coming back to the same thing namely the pressure within the container as a function of time starts off and goes to a high value. And the maximum pressure corresponds to the point of inflection that means the region wherein I have maximum taking place and thereafter anyway the slope changes that means the curvature changes this becomes the inflection point and this is the value of the maximum dp by dt what I get. That is the slope at the inflection point gives me the value of dp by dt maximum. And therefore, I can find out this out, I can use these expressions estimate the value of dp by dt using the energy conservation, but as you see it is somewhat approximate. We are just dealing with the energy of the burnt gases, we are dealing with the energy of the unburnt gases which are ahead of the flame and then arriving at the mean mixing temperature and from the mixing temperature I estimate the value of dp by dtm that is the maximum value. Supposing I have a certain volume of gas, let us say a small volume of gas, let us say V1. I have a slightly larger volume of gas V2 and still I have still a, a fixed volume which is V3 which is still larger. Now, 
between these three will the value of dp by dt for the same gas under the same condition of ignition same condition of turbulence same condition of propagation will it be same or different when i look at this particular expression here i have a small volume and what is going to happen the flame gets started over here it traverses in a slightly because the length the flame has to traverse is much smaller in this case the flame has to traverse a slightly larger distance in this case it traverses much larger distance therefore in the three cases if i were to plot the value of pressure versus time for the small volume well it traverses and reaches the value of pm and anyway the maximum pressure is only gamma minus 1 divided by the energy density q by v volume does not come pm is independent of the volume when the volume is slightly higher what is going to happen it is going to traverse a slightly longer distance and still reaches the value of pm if i have a still larger volume let us say this is v1 this is v2 if the volume is going to be much larger well it traverses a larger volume and reaches the same value of pm this is volume v3 well we find well in this case the value of dp by dt is quite quite steep in this case it's shallow in this case well the inflection point is somewhere over here it is still shallower therefore we find well the value of dp by dt is equal to a function of the volume of the gas mind you it's not only a function of the volume but it also depends on the turbulence level in the mixture the type of igniter what i have if i dump lot of energy into the medium well the gas gets heated the flame speed will be higher therefore we find it's a function of volume plus it is also a function of the ignite ignition source what we have it is also a function of the turbulence in the medium it is a function of the type of gas which is used but in addition you know we also find well in addition to turbulence ignition the volume of the gas it 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 could also depend to a large extent on the geometry of the vessel itself for instance if the if i had is spherical well this is the way the flame propagates if it's going to be a something like a vessel with a long l by d that is aspect ratio is long well the area is not going to change significantly as the flame propagates and therefore it depends on the geometry therefore dp by dt is function of all these things then how do we express it can i put the volume here and say dp by dt in these cases is going to be different therefore we look at the problem again we say yes you know to be able to propagate in a small volume the time taken for flame travel in this case is small in this case the time taken for flame to traverse is larger in this case it is still larger and what is the time taken it depends on the mean length over which the flame propagates divided by if the flame propagation speed is as let's say su and it is constant it is equal to l by su in this case it is going to be equal to the mean length divided by let us say the same value it is the same condition over here it is equal to let's say l3 by su therefore you know the the time taken that is the mean time taken corresponds to the length of flame travel and what is this characteristic length the characteristic of length goes as volume to the power 1 by 3 because volume has units of meter cube length has unit of meter and therefore i can tell myself if the condition of ignition if the condition of turbulence and if the geometrical constraints are all the same for a given mixture i can always write the value of dp by dt maximum as a function of length that means it uh, uh, depends on the length and we find as the length keeps decreasing or as the volume keeps decreasing what is going to happen the length keeps decreasing and therefore i get sharper spike or therefore therefore it goes as 1 over l not directly as l or rather it goes as length goes as v to the power 1 by 3 or rather i get dp by dt maximum into v to the power 1 by 3 is something like a constant and this constant is known as a kg value for a given gas mixture it kg as we now the, now say function of the igniter function of turbulence function of the geometry but it is a constant for a given gas mixture under these conditions also being constant 
and this kg value is what I wanted to specify when we consider methane air mixture stoichiometry the value is around 55 we are talking of pressure by time that is bar by second you know unfortunately the unit of pressure used is bar it is something like bar per meter into volume 1 by 3 is bar meter per second bar per second into meter 55 bar meter per second if I consider propane air C3 H8 air it is of the order of 75 bar meter per second if I consider a gas like hydrogen air stoichiometry it is something like 550 times 5 I am sorry 550 bar meter by second therefore this gives us the violence of the gas being generated that is the maximum value of dp by dt I use this particular expression therefore to summarize at this point we can say well we have estimated the maximum pressure in a constant volume explosion namely pm we have also estimated the value of dp by dt maximum and this we find is equal to 1 over 3 into 1 over 3 is a constant for a particular gas having the medium having the same turbulence level ignition source being similar and the geometry being similar values of this are available in literature using this I can find out for a given volume what is the severity or the rate of pressure rise in an explosion this is what is used but in general I can tell if I can ignite the gas at the center because the length of flame travel is lower well the dp by dt or the violence is going to be larger than if I am going to ignite the gases at the walls we also find a few things you know if we have maybe depending on the geometry depending on the blockages if by chance what is going to happen if there are blockages or if the flame becomes a detonation in its travel well the dp by dt maximum for a detonation is going to be very much higher and I cannot use this particular formula because this particular formula is only only true when I have a flame which is propagating and if a detonation propagates well the velocity of propagation is so high that I get a spike or a rapid increase in pressure therefore now the question comes if I have a high value of dp by dt or if I have a high value of pm how do I control this you know in, in practical cases it is important for us to be able to restrict the maximum value of pressure and also control the rate of pressure rise and for that you know we use the following in, in vessels of constant volume we put vents like we allow the gases to go out or you put something like a diaphragm which we call as a burst diaphragm or you have something like explosion doors in other words I have a volume over here I put something like a burst diaphragm which if the pressure exceeds some limit it goes away and what is going to happen well I have the pressure versus time in the case when there is no such burst diaphragm or a vent which is allowing the gases to go I have the pressure increasing like this supposing at this pressure the diaphragm burst what is going to happen well the pressure is going to droop like this I can control my value of pressure this is the value at which the diaphragm gives way this is my maximum pressure and this is how you control the pressure in uh, in in cases wherein you are restricted by the container to hold some particular gas pressure well we leave it at this these things can be estimated by the rate of efflux of gases from either the explosion door or the burst diaphragm and we can always find out what is this and do the particular problem well this is all about explosions in a confined geometry if we talk in terms of unconfined geometry we have already done it we found out that the that the value of the uh, time taken for chemical reactions let us say the energy release for uh, when the activation energies are large spikes like this this particular spike in the energy release even in an unconfined geometry we said can cause an explosion 
Well, in the next class, we will deal with uh, dust explosions and we will find, well, the same criterion applies there also. Well, thank you.